Once again, we are delighted to have Dr. Claire Elowat with us today. Uh, she's our returning teacher who has been leading Energy of Nature workshop in KFBG for over 10 years. And she spent her early childhood in Africa and later studied in France, completed a master degree in biology and PhD in vegetal ecology, followed by research in forest pathology and ecology. And Claire has been deeply connected with nature since childhood and later developed her perception of nature's energy and deepened it by learning about the Hindu philosophy on the five elements and chakras. She has been teaching people to communicate with nature and perceive its energy since 2004 in different parts of the world. And today she will guide us on how to open our hearts in connecting with nature, to be inspired by nature's adaptability, resilience, and simply being in the present. And so with the warmest welcome, I will now pass the time to Claire for our journey together today. Thank you very much. So good, uh, good evening to everyone. It's your evening uh, for, Ma, for me who is in France. It's uh, my lunchtime. <laughs> and I'm very happy to be with you today. And we are going to talk about, as Elise said, the opening of the heart in connection with nature, but also in connection with ourselves. You know, that's, uh, that's going together. So I'm going to talk while uh, presenting a PPT uh, PowerPoint. Uh, so it's, it's easier maybe for you to follow some of the words. I know that I have a strong French accent, so please <laughs> take that into account. And uh, so let's, let's look at the opening of the heart. So um, the opening of the heart, and then I will put the full screen. Yes, that's it. So you see me? So the opening of the heart in connection with nature, but before we start talking about it, I would like to quote uh, Andy Wordsworth. He is an artist who is doing a lot of art in nature. Uh, his uh, pieces of art are either temporal, that means that they disappear with the movements of water after a few, day, few minutes, or they are temporal, they stay for a while because he can be using stones, wood, or other elements of nature. So what he says is, we often forget that we are nature. Nature is not something separate from us. So when we say that we have lost our connection to nature, we've lost our connection to ourselves. So when we need to connect to ourselves to be able to connect to nature and we need to connect to nature to be able to connect to ourselves it's a it's a two way and that's what we are going to look at so when i talk about the heart i'm talking of course about the spiritual heart not the physical heart the one pumping the blood in the uh, body so the spiritual heart is a sacred space inside of us. It's uh, in connection with the chakra of the heart, with uh, the element of air. And it's a seat of many beautiful qualities like beauty, gracefulness, harmony, lightness, happiness, peace, serenity, harmony, freedom, and of course, love, empathy, and compassion. So these are some of the beautiful qualities that we can connect with when we go into our heart. And when we connect with the spiritual heart, we are in the present moment. We are here and now. And that's very important. That means that we are not in the past, not in the future, but we are here. And that's the place where we can experience oneness with the world and with the other living beings around us, human, animals, and plants. So the heart is the seat for a soul. And that's the place where the soul, the spirit, connects with the body and the mind. 
So when we are in our heart and connected with our body, we can say we are centered. We are connected with everything in the present moment, in oneness with everything. So the connection with the spiritual heart can be done through meditation. And there are many ways to meditate. For those who don't know how to meditate, one simple way to start with is to sit down in a comfortable posture and to close your eyes and to focus on your breathing. Breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, breathe out. You focus on it and you can sit. You can start with three, five minutes and then increase uh, when you, you can, you want. Etc. So this focus on the respiration makes that we have we are slowing down the mind. There are not not any more thoughts, you know, going here and there, being produced at a at a high speed, like a monkey jumping from one branch to another. We are focusing. We have only one thought. It's our breathing, our respiration. Prayer is also one way to connect with the heart. We have many ways to, there are many ways to pray. And I would like to come back on the meditation. We, so I mentioned one, uh, one uh, technique, one method, but ultimately meditation can be done at any time, at all times, at every minute. And it can be done open eyes. And it can be done when we walk and focus on our steps, our, our connection with the soil. With, it can be done when we are uh, observing nature and focus on one thing. For example, I like to take photos of nature and uh, mostly birds. I'm very attracted by birds. And uh, it happens that I can spend one hour just waiting for a bird or observing the bird to wait for the right moment, the right posture. And that's meditation. So prayer, prayer, we have many ways to pray and uh, asking. But the, the, the most powerful prayer is when we pray for the greater good. We don't, when we pray, we can pray for ourselves. Yes, we can be, the, the universe will listen to us. But the most powerful prayer is when it is for the highest. And then we can connect with the positive qualities of the heart and express them and let their energy flow freely in our heart and connecting with happiness, with love, with peacefulness. And this, in this way, these qualities are reinforced, they get stronger, and then we can express them more freely. The practice. And practice is something very important. The more we practice, the more we get the things coming out easily and free. And the open, when we open our heart, we open it to ourselves first, to our emotions. Then we can open our heart to others, to the emotions that other people express. So how do we do that with the support of nature? Well. We can say that many qualities of the heart can be found in nature. And I, uh, I can mention some examples. The love and care that parent animals give to their young. Even when they are adopted children. <laughs> and the friendship. And the support between different species of animals, it happens in nature in many ways. It has been observed that, for example, uh, in Africa, the badger is, uh, uh, likes very much honey, but sometimes it doesn't see where the beehives are. But this bird, this bird, the honey, bee, the honey bird, likes also very much honey and can see the beehives from, from the top, from, uh, from above. So it goes to, to look for a badger. And it, it by, by some, some little uh, shouts, it's telling it, follow me, follow me. And the badger follows it to the beehive. 
The bee, the, the bird cannot get into the beehive because it would be stung. But the badger has a very thick skin, and so it, it can eat its fill of honey. And but it always leaves a piece of honey for the bird, thanking, you know, as a thank you. So that's a cooperation. We also know that, for example, tortoises. They dig tunnels that can shelter many, many, up to 20 species of animals. For example, in Australia, when there, there are fires. We can connect in nature with the stability of a tree. This is a redwood, uh, a giant sequoia in California. With the beauty, the gracefulness, the lightness and harmony of a flower, of animals moving yeah, of a, in the flight of a bird. So there are many, many ways to experience these beautiful qualities and also the experience of wonder when we see a wild animal. Happiness and serenity when we are watching a beautiful landscape. This is Monet's garden, the, the painter Monet's garden. So nature connects directly with our heart and touches us in our deepest. It brings a sense of sacred and awe, and it gives us a sense of oneness with all of creation. How can we open more our heart? Well, there are some questions that we can ask ourselves. What do I want in my life? How do I want to live? Who do I want to be? These are questions that are leading to the way we open our heart, the way we connect with our heart and with other people's heart. Which qualities do I want to strengthen, to mostly express? Who do I want to be? We can connect with animals and plants. Observing, listening. There's a power in the observation and the listening of nature. When I wake up in the morning, I have the, the great chance to have a beautiful garden with trees, so there are many birds. It's a joy. That's the first thing that, that comes to me. What a joy. Celebration of life. And the, the birds are waking up and they celebrate life. Observing, we observe things. And when we observe the things, oh, there's a little new leaf in this plant. You know, it's also a celebration of life, but it's also a way to slow down the mind and to be connected, to be in the present, to let go of the past and not be anxious about the future. That's the present, the observation. The sense of wonder connecting with that. It's connecting with the inner child. Perceive the harmony in an ecosystem, in a, in a forest, in a, in a landscape. Being well with what is around us, being part of this harmony, becoming part of it. Just letting go of everything and becoming part of it. Oneness with other living beings, plants and animals, huh? feeling one, because in essence, we are the same. Water is in essence the same, whether li liquid, vapor, or solid. And we are in essence the same. All living beings are the same. They have, they have the, the same essence, the same core. Being in the present, with whatever happens here and now. And connecting with trees. Do you like to go to trees and touch them, hug them, connect with them? We are not obliged to touch them if we don't want to, if we don't feel like it. But just being close to a tree is bringing a tremendous experience. Trees are channels and they channel the soil energy and they channel the cosmic energy. So they are, they are channels of energy and they are very powerful. 